We're back with more on freeloaders. Do you remember the Shirley Sherrod scandal? Ms. Sherrod must resign immediately. The federal government cannot have skin color deciding any assistance. A video of Sherrod suggested that the Department of Agriculture loan officer refused to help a farmer because he was white. Sherrod then quit. This is a Fox News alert. An Obama administration official resigned just a short time ago. But then? We now know that video was edited to take what she said and twist it. I owe Ms. Sherrod an apology. But lost in the hype about Shirley Sherrod was a much bigger story, one that's eating billions of your tax dollars. What do we want? Taxes! What do we want it? Now! These protesters brought tractors and horses to Washington, claiming that the Agriculture Department loan officers did the opposite of what Sherrod was falsely accused of. They favored whites. This lawyer claims the department is racist. If John Stossel goes back to wherever you might have grown up and you decide to farm and you go in to get a loan, you're going to do pretty well. You're a white man. But if you sent in a neighbor of yours who happened to be a black man to your local county committee, you're not going to do well. Because they're all racist? Pretty much. So he sued the government on behalf of black farmers. The government issued a groveling apology. We are requiring full civil rights training for all of our employees, starting from me down. And the United States agreed to pay $50,000 to any black farmer who could show that the department discriminated against him. People in Congress said things like, They need to start writing checks today. The government is writing billions in checks. But farmer Jimmy Dismook says it's a scam because lawyers told people anyone can qualify for $50,000. People say, well, how do I qualify? And then they started talking about the potted plants. And they said, if you had a potted plant, you can be a, you're a farmer. And if you have a yard and you fertilize it, you're a farmer. Dismook showed us a list of people who got money. This one is not a farmer. This one's not a farmer. And then you go on and on on these pages. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Not farmers. We called and left messages for the people on the list, but no one responded. Dismook was discriminated against, and he collected $50,000. But then he noticed what he calls the fraud. Since the government had few records, it settled the lawsuit by agreeing to write checks to people who just said they'd attempted to farm. An attempted to farm could mean anything. You know, you know my, my little three-year-old grandson could have tempted. How could you lose? There's no way you could lose. A fellow cross. Jimmy once hired this lawyer, yes, a fellow cross, okay. who's made money by filing thousands of fifty thousand right. dollar claims. This is the termination agreement. Cross says he only learned about the fraud after the claims were paid. People would come up to him and say, mm -hmm. "Lawyer, you know John never farmed in his life. His daddy never farmed." When I went back and looked at it, it was true. Mm -hmm. And so more than a billion dollars was given out to about 15,000 farmers and attempted farmers. So many claimed they were farmers that recently Congress approved another billion dollars plus for more claimants. This farmer, who didn't want to appear on camera, showed us a building where many people who said they attempted to farm filled out claims. They wasn't really farmers, but Perry, Al Perry made it possible for them to be eligible by coming in and saying if you attempted to farm that you are eligible. Al Pyres, he's that lawyer who won the big settlement. How many farmers have you helped file claims? Oh gosh, thousands, thousands and thousands. How do you know they're farmers? Well, this, they fill out the forms and we, we, we hope that they're telling the truth. So you don't think this is just an opportunity to freeload, to cheat? Although there are some uh, people who cheat, most people are very honest. Most people are very, very honest. They're afraid to cheat if they're filling out a federal form. It's not quite what you think. But given America's culture of entitlement, some don't even view getting checks as cheating. They say all black people deserve reparations. If you are an African-American, you do $50,000 because your roots are in farming. Your folk have already been cheated. You're just collecting what your grandparents didn't have the opportunity to. After all, says the lawyer, the government is racist. He says the USDA is stacked against minorities, stacked against blacks, stacked against women, 
Native Americans. It's stacked against everybody but white men. Is there any minority that wasn't discriminated against? Not to my knowledge. So now he's filed lawsuits for all those groups, including the women. In 1978, women owned just 5% of all farms. By 97, the number was up to 8%. Maybe you should sue for men. Uh, for, for white men? Yeah. White, white men don't need any help. How much money will you get? We, we, we were paid very modestly. $10 million? Um, year round there. It was very, it was very low. And there were, low? I, I don't think $10 million is low. And Othello Cross says the total lawyer's take <sighs> was much more. <laughs> Somewhere between 40 and $50 million. I believe the lawyers made out real well, and uh, I think they was the winners in the whole lawsuit. They usually are, and they make even more money helping other people freeload. That's next. The last people we consider freeloaders are homeowners. They're the salt of the earth. Many go into debt to get their homes. <laughs> And then cruelly, some lose their home. Since the housing busts, we've heard such sad stories. A foreclosure judge gave the 82-year-old disabled woman 24 hours to pack up and leave. I was traumatized. But there is another side to this story. This Florida woman hasn't made a mortgage payment since 1985. The bank says she owes hundreds of thousands of dollars, but she just doesn't pay. She's delayed foreclosure by filing legal appeals. The 25-year foreclosure from hell is what the bank's lawyer calls it. She's beaten you. She's got a good bit of knowledge about the law. She's a paralegal who uses bank paperwork errors to her advantage. She told us she's not going anywhere. She hasn't been beaten in court, she says, and she never will be. She's winning. She's learned how to freeload off the system. I give her a lot of kudos for that. Why does he give her kudos? She's a freeloader. He's a freeloader, too. Win or lose, he still collects a paycheck from the bank. The losers are you people who pay your mortgage on time. Should some of these bankers get arrested? Absolutely. I mean, the media claim that evil banks take homes from people. It's a disaster for millions of Americans. The problem isn't with the borrowers. It's with the lenders and servicers. It's not the borrowers. It's the bank. That attitude leads some people to trash their homes before the bank can take it back. This guy drove his truck through his home. I said I wasn't about to, to give the, the house back to the bank so they could profit off of me. Don't take a home. And Jesse Jackson's protesters are in the streets criticizing the banks. They claim predatory lenders trick people into taking out unaffordable loans. But is that true? The Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta found unaffordable loans are unlikely to be the main reason that borrowers decide to default. If predatory lending isn't the main driver of defaults, then what might be? YouWalkAway.com was founded... In well, companies that encourage people to walk away from commitments sure don't help. YouWalkAway.com. I mean, there sounds something dirty about that, like walk away from responsibility. Well, that's, that's the, uh, the myth, I think, in society that there's this moral uh, obligation to continue paying a mortgage. There is. There is no ethical obligation. Co-founder Chad Rule calls it a strategic default. If your house is worth less than your mortgage, just stop paying. His website asks if you'd like to live payment-free for eight months or more and walk away without owing a penny. I mean, it sounds like a scam, but this is true. No, it's not a scam at all. It's completely legal. Peter Safranoff, one of their clients, stopped paying his mortgage. You could have afforded to stay there and pay the mortgage. Well, and they could you have. You weren't broke. You, you no, had the money. Safranoff bought this house in California for about $400,000. After the housing bubble burst, its value dropped to 300000 when his bank wouldn't modify his mortgage, YouWalkAway.com advised him that he could default on purpose without paying another dime. More grim numbers on the home front. Of course, when a person defaults, it's not just the bank who picks up the tab. You might pay your mortgage on time, but if your neighbor forecloses, it tends to reduce the value of your home, too. I live up to my contract and they're thus uh, left with... Your legal contract? What about your moral contract? My moral contract, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by moral. You're hurting other people. 
You're hurting your neighbors. You're hurting everybody else who wants to get a mortgage. This is not a moral issue. You guys are disgusting. You're helping people freeload. We're not helping people freeload. You know, people's decision to, to walk away is a personal one and is a financial one. Uh, but isn't it immoral? No. Next, the group that may be the biggest freeloaders of all, corporations.